of demo here. So from the mm. from your list. But it's not here, Rizki Ramadan. Rizki. Rizki also not here. Okay. Zongwoyin. Zongwoyin is here. Okay. Right. right. And then uh, Dwika Muzaki. I think it's not here yet. Dr. Jamaluddin is here and Dr. Nolhuda Salud. Dr. Norhuda Salil, so it's not here. So we only have two presenters. That is key. I just wonder, do they send their recording? Um, they said that they will be presenting live. All oh, presenters are presenting live. So, um, Doctor, can we start with maybe Zonghua Yin first? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Uh, Assalamualaikum Ms. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hold on, uh, Mr. Imran. Waalaikumsalam. Miss Zonghua Yin? Miss Zonghua Yin? Mr. Imran, she didn't respond. Yeah. <laughs> Try to call her at no, I mean at text there. or just All right. make she alert. She also didn't respond. Because um she's not in the <laughs> WhatsApp group, but I, okay, I texted it's okay. her already. Okay, so it's okay. Uh, we will start with might be Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Jamaluddin. Dr. Jamaluddin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished chairperson, lecturers, presenters, and participants. Welcome to the parallel session in the International Conference on Media and Communication or Mention 2021. My name is Imran Muhammad Yusuf and I will be the MC for today. I'll be assisted by Danish Mukris in this parallel session. This is session 8.8 with two teams, which is first, media literacy, and second, media and culture. The chairperson for this session is Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Nur Shahizan bin Ali, Senior Lecturer in Center for Research in Media Communication, University Kemasaan Malaysia. We have six paper presenters today. Each presenter is given 10 to 15 minutes of presentation time. If any of the presenters could not give a live presentation due to internet problems, we will play back their video, but we hope that the presenter is available for question and answer session later. Without further ado, over to you, Dr. Shahizan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Imran, and your assistant, Mr. Danish, 
Marquez. Uh, welcome to mention uh, 2021 conference. And uh, thank you very much for everybody, uh, our presenters and our, and our participants. Uh, we will start with our first uh, presenter, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Jamaluddin Aziz from uh, University of Bangsa Malaysia. Without any delay, over to you, uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Jamaluddin Aziz. Assalamualaikum, uh, Dr. Shahidan and uh, friends. Um, I, may I share my uh, document, please? How do I share screen? Eh? Please allow me to share the screen. Okay, um, is that? All right, okay. Is that, is that clear? Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chairperson, Mr. Imran, and our moderator for today, Dr. Shahizan. Uh, pleased to see you guys today because I think it's been a while that we uh, meet each other. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to present today and to be the first presenter, I think it's kind of break a lot of nervousness. And, um, but that's okay, because for me, this is about me sharing what I've gone through while doing the research itself. So my uh, presentation today is entitled Cinema and its Bad Guys. Uh, looking at the lockdown narratives and themes of some selected COVID era films. Uh, this is a title that came about as a response to the theme of the conference itself. I think it's really important for us to uh, to understand that this conference is to uh, is for us to understand, to re-examine uh, the common practice that we have under the new norm. So I would like to start my uh, my presentation now by uh, bringing uh, a way of introduction by looking at Andre Bazin's seminal work entitled What is Cinema? Uh, Bazin argues that cinema reveals to the anxious and alert spectator a world alive with possibilities that ask for recognition and response. I think this is integral to the idea of how cinema grapples with uh, contemporary anxieties, nervousness that we are talking about, and also the kind of existential despair that comes out of a, a pandemic itself. So when I talk about, when Andrew Bazin talk about cinema to reveal the anxious and alert spectator, um, the film that I will be focusing on today, because even though the paper looks at several films, a collection of films that respond to the lockdown, but I will be focusing on one of the films today due to the time limitation. So I'll be focusing on the host. I think throughout my presentation, there will be a reference to spectator, a world alive and with possibilities that asks for recognition and response. I hope you remember that statement because uh, in my presentation, I will allude to that sentiment throughout my presentation itself. So when we talk about cinema, I would like to bring a very important uh, understanding of what cinema is. So when we talk about cinema, we talk about one, I would argue that we can talk about cinema as a text, as a material culture that, uh, that is a window to our culture or also um, a window looking into our culture. So there are two ways of looking at cinema itself, cinema as a cinematic uh, uh, text and also cinema as a cinematic text exhibition place. So when you talk, uh, talk about cinematic at text exhibition place, you are looking at the cineplex, for example. So when, when if, if I ask you, where are you going? And you say, I'm going to the cinema. So we are talking about that place. And when I talk about film, I talk about cinema as a text or material culture. This is very important in uh, roping into the idea of the pandemic itself, because uh, when we talk about how cinema has been affected we are looking at how cinema as a text or cultural product being affected by the COVID-19. Importantly, we are also talking about how cinema as an exhibition place has been affected. Because if you think about uh, the possibilities that pandemic offer to, to the creative industry itself, you see uh, this example, the collection of films that I have studied is 
an example of how cinema as a text thrives within the conflict or the situation that we have. Where else cinema as an exhibition or as, as a place has been having issues with exhibition. So a lot of money uh, have gone down the drain because films, uh, especially blockbusters like Tenet, uh, Dune, or even James Bond 007, uh, were withheld from exhibition and they missed their summer blockbuster because of the problem that cinema as an exhibition place uh, were having or have been having, right? So today with that idea of cinema as a text and cinema as an exhibition uh, place, uh, how they work together within the context of the pandemic, right? So in that line of argument, uh, if, if I look at Android Bajan's argument just now, it resonates well with the present COVID-19 situation because the film industries globally have received a horrendous financial blow. I said that again, you know, uh, 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 the companies have lost a lot of money, especially not because of the film exhibition itself, but because of the advertising that they have spent. They spent money on advertising, but they couldn't show the film. So however, for the film tax and film industry itself, uh, this kind of phenomenon, interesting, interestingly, has uh, presented the industry with a repertoire of human stories to, to work with. I mean, that gives us, uh, the people who work within the creative industry, an opportunity to explore other themes, right? So indeed, as the quotation that I have provided before suggests, cinema has always been instrumental in cap capturing contemporary anxiety, right? Uh, so when we talk about contemporary anxiety, what makes us feel nervous about the situation now? You know, we feel we have mental, Ill, men, mental uh, uh, distress and whatnot. This is the kind of contemporary anxiety that I'm, I'm talking about. So uh, cinema, for example, from World Wars to the most recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, respond to humanity, respond to what uh, we call the zeitgeist or the spirit of the era. It questions, it tries to make sense of what's happening and uh, how uh, does cinema try to make sense of what's happening? They do that by projecting such anxiety for the audience to recognize and respond through the images on the screen. So you see the idea of the audience recognizing and responding to that as central to what I am talking about today. So when you talk about cinema and its zeitgeist as well, it kind of brings back the idea or the argument about the significance of genre films. Uh, genre films such as war, melodrama, horror, sci-fi, and all that have always been seen as the types of genre that these genres are successful at providing a glance at human existential despair. And this existential despair produces uh, iconographies that help us define and characterize the genre itself. So this is what Stephen Neal uh, in 2000 uh, talks about the genre film is often categorically recognized by the audience identification with gener generic conventions or whatever you call it style or formulae. So the question that arises from this particular revisiting of the genre is can lockdown narrative itself work within this genre trapping? So the genre inquiries that I have while working on this uh, paper, I, I was thinking like, you know, uh, the COVID actually ironically provide great opportunities for filmmakers to explore this moment of rupture or the new normal. So for me, this situation evokes some specific research questions. The first research question that I would like to uh, introduce is what lockdown narratives are created by these films? And number two, how do these narratives contribute towards the understanding of the film's central themes? And why are these themes conjured? Yeah, so some, subsequently, I'll be asking, I'll be going back, alluding to the title, what is the zeitgeist captured 
by this lockdown narrative. So basically, it sounds a bit more mechanical, but if I go to the conclusion, I hope you understand that. So the methodology for this particular research, I employ qualitative uh, research approach, and I do uh, a close textual reading of some selected films. Uh, however, the criteria of the film selected uh, are the first one, the films were produced during COVID-19 lockdown, and these films are produced within weeks. Huh? And two, film, uh, two, the films are feature films. They are not documentaries, even though they do have documentary elements or style to it uh, because of the nature of filmmaking in that period. And number three, the films address the lockdown directly. So the films chosen for this research are Rob Savage's Host and uh, Do Lehman's Lockdown, and other films will be mentioned cursorily. But for the purpose of this presentation itself, I will focus on the host because textual analysis requires detailed analysis of the text itself. So, um, you know, it's important for me to, to talk about the framework of, of, of my work itself. So I would take a narrative as a critical concept because for me, I borrow Andrew Spy and Tomboku idea that narrative is there to in indicate the line of thematic and causal progression in cultural form, such as in a film or a novel. Basically, uh, it provides narrative provides insight into the story that would help us to reveal the theme. So you might be asking, what is a theme? You know, if I met at here. I don't subscribe to the idea of people saying, oh, the theme is actually the subject you know, or the moral lesson of it. For me, the theme is what is the general observation that the film makes about the current uh, situation or what kind of anxiety, what kind of commentary that the film makes about the contemporary anxiety that I was, uh, I was talking about. So in this research, I'm looking at film narratives uh, which can be uh, spoken or written or visual language. And it's important for me to highlight here, I use the I as a methodological choice because for me, it's important for me to let you understand that this is my interpretation of the film. This is how I make sense of the film. So it doesn't have to be something that reflected on your own understanding of the film, but basically I am inviting you into my understanding of the film. So the, the film that I am focusing now is entitled The Host. All right, uh, it's uh, actually on the streaming uh, channel. Uh, a shadow original, but when you look at the publicity material, you know that there are visual iconographies such as the fear. And you know, if you look at the two girls there, the two ladies there, you know that this film, you can expect as an audience that this is going to be something a bit scary, something like the horror genre. So you see that kind of recognition, and you would respond by saying, I'm not going to watch this because it's an horror film. But I think uh, this is very important, an indication that this is uh, a film uh, produced during the pandemic and it uh, says something about uh, the pandemic itself. And the tagline used at the beginning of the film, interestingly, uh, the first one, it says, we use technology to connect with each other. But what if we connect with something else? So as a communication scholar, we look at these uh, phrases or these sentences, and it makes us think about, you know, what is communication? What happens in communication because of the COVID situation? And uh, this refers directly to our understanding of the medium is the message itself. When technology becomes part of us and it defines the meaning that is uh, tried to be delivered by the communication practice itself. So when we have this, when I saw this, it reminds me of medium uh, message, medium is the message itself. So it is a not to McLuhan idea about communication. So I will go directly to Rob Savage's uh, film post. Um, I think I would like to bring in my own personal encounter with this film because I think uh, this is related to I as the methodology of choice itself. Before I elaborate on what happens, you know, I actually watch this uh, film on my laptop in my office 
uh, about 70 after Margaret. And to be honest with you, because I'm, I'm so used to watching horror films, I did not expect to be scared by this film. But to be honest with you, uh, after watching like uh, halfway, I had to switch off my laptop and leave my office. I will explain to you later why. But what I'm saying is even at the start, even the, at the outset of the film itself, you'll see that one of the characters, which is Haley, by the way, the characters also use the actual name of the actresses who play the role. Most of them are at least the six uh, central female characters, right? They use the same na uh, name in uh, the character itself. So the film actually starts with Haley trying to set up uh, a Zoom platform, right? So you see Haley private meeting. I think by now we are so familiar with online learning, online meeting. So you feel that I felt that I was preparing to join a Zoom session as well. So I think that is central to me understanding or making sense of what is going to be experienced by the character. So, but for me as well, when I look at Haley private meeting, I'm part of that technology and part of the meeting, even though I'm not included directly. So for me, it becomes in film term, a, full sh a foreshadow that this film is about uh, a private communication that will take place in a public space, you know, because I it is a private a meeting, but I'm also part of that private meeting. So it becomes a public space. Right? So that sense of ambivalence is very important here. So as the screen shows the actual setting up exactly how Zoom is set up, uh, according to the interview uh, done by Sight and Sound, um, Rob Savage's uh, uh, admits that he works closely with the Zoom company to work on this film, right? So the actual setting up is how, um, what do you call that? How Zoom meeting is set up. And indeed, the film is quite short. It is actually about 56 minutes, but the whole main scene itself only happens within the setting up and uh, when the free Zoom time, which is about 40 minutes, expires. So the whole, the whole event happens real-time Zoom, free Zoom subscription. You know, it's like only for 40 minutes. So it's an indication how the film attempts to make it realistic in that sense. So for me, the way you see the screen with the arrow, with, with the mouse movement, that signals the idea that this is a, 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 a film making a commentary about communication technology as indicated before, while creating a sense of familiarity for the audience who by now have at least heard of Zoom Meet. Like I felt so familiar with what happened at the time and I knew what was the kind of expectation. So it is revealed after that, that the film is about six friends getting together via Zoom meeting during the lockdown to perform songs uh, by, hiring, uh, uh, by hiring a medium. So seance is used to contact the dead. And usually they do it outside, they uh, sit in the circle and they lit a uh, candle, they light the candle and they hold hand together in the circle, right? But this happens in the Zoom itself in which you see this is the setting. These are actually, uh, these are uh, five female characters uh, they are the central characters, and this is the character who disappeared and came back and was affected by that. I'm not going to give you the spoiler, but uh, what I am going to uh, raise here is that sense of familiarity. In fact, to be honest with you, when they were smiling, uh, they were very English in, in the way they present themselves, but I'm quite familiar with the English culture. So I myself, so when they were smiling, I was also smiling because I thought I was part of that meeting. So that sense of familiarity was established at the outset of the film to create a sense of what's going on so that you actually follow what's happening to the characters. And this is what we call immersive cinema because I was so familiar with that and I was so hooked to the screen, I was actually like joining their meeting. So there is a sense of immersive cin cinema going on that creates, you know, uh, that breaks the gap between me as the audience responding to that, making sense of that, that I feel that. And that was the reason why I had to switch off my laptop at about eight o'clock and left my office at night because I thought I was part of that. And I was also 
you know, feeling like there was something behind me. I think it's crucial, but because this is the success of this kind of technology, they use whatever they have within that time, within that space that they have, and they create this such wonderful uh, storytelling. You know, so uh, when we look at uh, that as well, in other films that I've cited, and I've, uh, I've checked some films called Lockdown, but Lockdown in, film, in the Philippine cinema is very much the LGBTQ cinema type of uh, type of cinema. But if you look at the close-up that we have here, uh, because the face, the faces are foregrounded, you feel that you are looking because the pictures are magnifying all these images. But there's also a sense that something is lurking. If you see here, Caroline is uh, looking at the back, at her back, that shows that it's not just what you see on screen, but also what's lurking behind that is not shown. So the v, this kind of visual iconography appears in many other uh, lockdown COVID narratives, but not as extensive as what we are seeing here. So I think that creates that sense of, it's not just the space, but it's also the depth of the space. So this familiar to the unfamiliar, moving from one territory to another, is for me, uh, resembles the horror trope horror genre trope. So you will see how technology becomes the source of fear itself and technology as the conduit of fear itself and technology as the expression of fear itself. But if I look at all this, uh, I can actually trace that and all these kind of fear uh, can be traceable in uh, the technophobia narrative in sci-fi horror in, in the tradition set by earlier exploration narratives such as Planets of the Apes, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey and Blade Runners. I think some of you might have come across all these classics, huh? but if you watch all these sci-fi horror, you, you can identify with that sense of familiar to that unfamiliar how you scared that technology can overtake your power. And that sense is what I get when I watch the film. So how is host different? Uh, many critics have identified the relationship between the film's horror genre tropes with a cinematic style that is via visual iconography that symbolizes something else. So that screen that you see, the window to the picture, the images of the close-up of the, uh, the female characters, it symbolizes something. And you can see in many lockdown narratives because uh, lockdown is often associated with that, and that becomes the window to the outside world. You see that as an icon iconography that symbolizes something else, meaning that it becomes a metaphor for something else. So extreme close-up provides not only a sense of claustrophobia, but it also creates an immersive cinematic moment, what I said just now. And suffice for me to say that the host I think will not be effective if, if you watch it at cinema, the way I define cinema, or it's not as successful even if you watch a streaming in a big screen. It is more effective as a laptop cinema because it becomes that, you know, because you become immersive. I don't know how this is, uh, it's scary, but it's funny at the same time. I feel so stupid and clever at the same time. So that's the irony of it. And I think, okay, we are looking at the narrative. Yeah. You have two minutes left. All right, okay, so I'm going straight to that. So the film actually, the film is actually making commentary on race and gender. So these are the things that I would like to highlight. For example, race, Gemma is, Gemma is actually one of the characters with Chinese uh, dead grandparents. So she asked the question, can the spirit, uh, you know, invite, uh, can the spirit understand English because my grandparents were Chinese? So, but she was the one who unintentionally in, un, uh, invited Maryland spirit because she, she fooled around. And gender, because the sole male participant did not continue, but the female medium keeps getting disconnected. Therefore, comments about feminization of the, spirit, the media, the spirit of the other or binary of female chaos, chaos are that. So, host, host follows the tradition of many horror films, specifically found footage subgenre. So I would like to go to the conclusion. Uh, what lockdown narratives are created by these films?
simply, I would say, gender narrative and critical race narrative. And number two, how do these narratives contribute towards the understanding of the film's central themes for gender? It contributes to the theme of women as a source of fear, and the race narrative contributes to the theme of xenophobia, the phobia of the unknown. So why are these themes conjured? And what is the zeitgeist captured by this lockdown narrative? So for me, it's a reminder of this existential despair or existential fear related to fear of women and fear of the unknown. So thank you. Questions? Thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Jamaluddin, uh, for the presentation. And uh, any question and answer will be answered after the whole session have been uh, have finished. Okay, now we go to our second presenter, uh, Miss Zhong Wu Yin. How do I unshare? How do I unshare this? Oh, finish. Just click. Uh, just click. Uh, slide. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Miss Zhong Wu Yin. Hello, doctor. Yeah. Yeah. You can share your slide now. Okay, okay. Then continue with your presentation. Okay, okay, doctor. Okay. Okay, could you see the screen? Yes, clearly. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Zhonghua. Now I want to show my research for you all. Uh, the title is Media Convergence, the Future Trend of County Convergent Media Center in Zhejiang Province of China. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the abstract is uh, the de uh, development of mobile communications and the internet has caused a huge impact on traditional media. In order to cope with the new media environment, the in-depth convergence of traditional media and new media had become an unstoppable trend. However, media convergence had brought many challenges. In 2018, Chinese pres uh, President Xi Jinping proposed, we must do a good job in the construction of county convergent media centers. Since then, the construction of county convergent media centers in China has set of a clam, uh, climax. This paper takes uh, the, break, uh, the background of media convergence at the start point, <clears throat> use the literature research method to summarize China's uh, existing research on county convergent media center, uh, derives its concept, functions, dilemma, uh, paths, and the models, and provides a uh, comprehensive review of the problem encountered in the construction of county convergent media centers in Zhejiang province in an attempt to discover its future development trend. Okay. <coughs> the content includes four parts, background, literature review, the garden and the conclusion, and uh, uh, limitations and uh, contributions. The first part is about the background. The culture of media <clears throat> convergence is a game changer to the journalism industry, and it has gradually swept the world over the past two decades. Huang defines media convergence as the merging of two media products in one newsroom, usually uh, the integration of traditional and modern media channels. In other words, media convergence is a combination and the integration of different media channels into a single digital platform. Jenkins also emphasized that the media convergence should be viewed as an integration between different media platforms, uh, rather as a technological shift. Media convergence is nothing new to the media industry, but such convergence is pretty challenging as the media industry is transforming its business uh, models and enter under the new internet market. The new trend of media convergence has greatly shaped and uh, transformed uh, the media environment in China and has brought a tremendous amount of benefits such as uh, reduced operating and uh, production costs and uh, a wide distribution of media content networks. 
the invention and rapid development of computer technology have promoted media convergence since the early 1990s. However, the level of media convergence in China is still at a relatively shallow level and the development speed is uh, slow. Uh, nevertheless, more, more effort must be made to accelerate the integration trend. Driven by the global market demands, media convergence is inevitable, and uh, the traditional Chinese media industry had no choice but to adapt to this integrated development. Oops, that. Okay. At the most basic level in China's uh, four levels of broad. Uh, broadcasting and television policy, the construction of Catholic Multimedia Center is imperative. Oh, why is there is some? Okay, from August uh, 21st to 22nd to 2018, Chinese President Xi Jinping pointed out at the National Conference on Ideological Work. We must do a good job in the construction of content convergent media centers to guide and uh, serve the masses better. Uh, since then, the construction of content convergent media center has set off a view in China. Among the, 30, uh, among the 34 provinces in China, Zhejiang province is the first to start a construction of content convergent media center and benefiting from the local economic pro uh, prosperity is, is also one of the best development. Among them, Changxing County, Anji, Anji County, Salmon County, and uh, some other country convergent media centers have uh, uh, explored their own unique models and uh, achieved good profits. Nevertheless, the, con the construction of convergent media center in Zhejiang province still has some um, uh, problems such as an even regional development. A rigid system, lack of uh, talent and uh, content innovation. Uh, therefore, attention should be paid to the research and the future trend of the development of County Convergent Media Center in Zhejiang province. The second part is about the literature review. <coughs> okay, first, the media convergence. To understand what is uh, what media convergence is, we must first define convergence. Uh, Chris uh, Lawson brothers defined convergence as the uh, realm of possibilities when cooperation occurs between print and uh, broadcast for the delivery of uh, multimedia content through the use of computers and the internet. According to Jack Kings, uh, convergence alters the relationship between uh, existing technologies, industries, markets, uh, journeys, and the audience. Convergence refer to a process, but not a, but not an endpoint. In addition, convergence is defined as a deep integration of knowledge, tools, and all relevant activities of human activity for a common goal to allow society uh, to answer new questions and uh, to answer new questions to change the respective uh, physical or social. Uh, ecosystem. Recent study by many scholars have discovered some strategic challenges uh, brought by media convergence. Uh, as such, the digi uh, digitization of media content has led to a uh, decline in professional auto autonomy, as well as journalist performance and uh, technical issues. In addition, despite the positive attitude of journalists, the main challenges they face in the process of implementing uh, their media integration uh, strategy are lack of professional training, overburdened work, and uh, business-driven uh, strategies. Media conferences are long and tedious process, but uh, strategic planning can help the media industry better understand the impact of media convergence and the better implementation of media convergence strategies. Nevertheless, European countries research on media convergence culture reveals the, the effort and the effective strategies adopted by journalists to optimize the quality of digital content. High quality content production includes the uh, production of interesting videos and uh, interactive graphic content to better deliver 
uh, media content. On the other hand, Liu studied the trend of Chinese media content in the, in the past five uh, in the past five years based on big data analysis. Uh, studies have shown have shown that uh, the degree of media inter, uh, integration in China in China's media industry has gradually uh, increased, but overall it has slowed down. The author also claimed that the impact of media convergence has not yet reached uh, the, the ideal state and uh, effective development strategies should be implemented to achieve better results. Therefore, the, the effort, uh, the, the effect of media convergence is uh, visible and uh, can be measured by uh, appropriate strategies. Second, uh, for the research of County Convergent Media Center uh, in China. Uh, uh, I conducted a literature search in the CNKI database with the County Convergent Media as a topic. Uh, there were uh, 4,120 uh, 4, art uh, articles in total. The number of papers in the past 10 years uh, in order is is shown in the in the in the chart. Um, from the chart, we can see that from 20, uh, 2011 to twenty twelve, the research on county convergent media was zero. From twenty thirteen to twenty seventeen, the number of papers on the theme of county convergent media century uh, was relatively small, all of which were less than ten, which means the research on it. Uh, had just begun. Uh, since 2018, uh, the number of papers on county convergent media center in China has begun to increase sharply. The main reason is that Chinese President Xi Jinping clearly uh, proposed at the national conference uh, to con construct a county convergent media center. Therefore, ac uh, academic and the industry has begun to conduct in-depth uh, exploration research on county convergent media center from 2019 uh, to 2020. Uh, the research on county convergent media has, has been heating up and uh, the relevant research paper have re reached more than 1,000. Uh, in 2021, uh, the research on county convergent media center is, is still a research hard part. <laughs> According to the current literature research situation, most of China's county convergent media uh, research mainly focused on the following aspects, concept, functions, uh, dilemma, uh, paths, uh, and the models. Okay, the first is about the concept. Uh, in 2018, County Convergent Media Center began to spring up in China at the same time papers on County Convergent Media Center are increasing day by day and uh, many Chinese scholars have mentioned its definition in their articles. However, before October uh, 20, uh, 2021, only one paper with the theme of the concept study of the County Convergent Media Center can be found in CNKI. According to Liu Yongfeng and uh, Jiang Yuxi, the current research on the concept of County Convergent Media Center is, uh, is still weak. It's true that the clari clarification of basic concept will help promote its construction. Liu and Jiang believe that the County Convergent Media Center is a grassroots public welfare uh, institution that uh, integrates county level media resources, build, abuse uh, integrated media platforms and develop media business and the relative uh, and the related business. This definition clearly points out the nature, uh, construction methods, uh, attributes, and the functions of the county convergent media center. <laughs> The second is about the functions. Up to now, there have been abundant researchers on the functions of County Convergent Media Center at the, at the mainstream media at the grassroots level in China with the uh, largest number and the widest uh, geographical coverage. Its functions may, uh, mainly include the following three aspects. The so first is public opinion guidance function, and the second is information uh, function, and uh, the last is 
public service function. Excuse, excuse me, Miss. You have another three minutes. Okay, okay, thank you. The third is about the reasons for the dilemma. The county government middle center is new thing due to the uneven, uh, due to the uh, uneven economic and the cultural development in China and the lack of experience in building county government middle centers. Although the county government middle center have been widely built, uh, they encounter difficulties in the development process. Some of them are even unable to survive in market competition because they are unable to make a profit. Based on the summary of existing research, the, uh, the specific reasons can be divided into the following categories. Uh, the first is, is uh, institution rigidity, uh, rigidity uh, lack and uh, lack of talents and uh, lack of contents. Uh, next about the past. The so-called past research refers to the methods of the construction of county government media center. At present, the research is mainly divided into two aspects. One is the organization methods, and the one and the other is the specific methods of construction. For the organization methods, Lin Xin and Zhang Yanyan divided uh, the past into two main types. The first is relying on the power of county level TV uh, stations to uh, build convergent media center and another is uh, the other is relying on the strength of higher level TV station to build convergent media center. Uh, for the specific matters of construction, uh, Chen uh, Chen Guo and uh, Fu Xiaxia divide the path into four uh, main points. Uh, the first is the institutional innovation is key and the uh, second uh, the channel innovation is the foundation. Uh, the third, uh, the business innovation is an important task. And uh, fourth, the talent support is the fulcrum. Uh, the last about the model. Uh, the model of Kantigan Media Center is about, is another hot part recently, and uh, it is a successful case uh, that can be imitated and promoted based on practical experience. Divided by regions of China, there are the following typical models. The first is Changxin model, a typical representative of the construction of Kantigan Media Media Center in the uh, economically developed areas of Eastern China. The second is uh, Yumen model. Uh, uh, it's a model uh, in in Western China, and the third is a Fengyi model, a case in third uh, central part of China, and uh, it is a typical example of cooperating with a, a provincial level platform to build a convergent media center. Okay, for the county convergent media centers in Zhejiang province. Zhejiang province is a coastal province in Eastern China, located on the southern wing of the economically developed Yangtze River Delta. Uh, relying on the developed economic economy and uh, innovative spirit, uh, the construction of county convergent media centers in Zhejiang has always been at the forefront of China. Uh, research on the construction of county convergent media center in Zhejiang province is of great, uh, great reference value for the construction of county convergent media center uh, in China. According to the existing research on the county convergent media center in, China, in Zhejiang, in order to achieve a higher level of integration and realize the overall development of the county convergent media center in Zhejiang, the problems are need to be solved are, are shown in the, in the slides. Okay, discussion and uh, conclusion. From the literature, it can be summarized that the trend of media coverage is unstoppable, but the study of China's county convergent media center had not yet formed a complete theory. Although the research on the county convergent media center is increasing, it lacks uh, theori uh, theoretically. Most of the research are on the nature of being in it to solve practical construction pro problems. The content is complex and uh, there are many branches. In addition, the content of most paper is highly uh, repetitive. 
and only a few are really meaningful and uh, innovative. This is because of the uh, formulation of media policies in China. The county commercial media center has, has become a research hotpot and so many scholars follow the trend to write. But most of the research results has no reference value for solving practical problems. Finally, because uh, county commercial media center is a new media with Chinese characteristics. There is no experience abroad in uh, history to refer to. And uh, its final model is still in inconclusive. The research on the County Convergent Media Center is ongoing and more attention needs to be paid. As a pioneer in the County Convergent Media Center reform of China, uh, Zhejiang province should pay attention to improving the uneven uh, regi uh, regional development and increasing capital investment in the newly established County Convergent Media Center. Uh, intensi intensify system reform and change uh, the unreasonable parts of the Vaccine name. attract talents with a uh, sound profession, a uh, pro promotion, um, machinism, and the salary system. Uh, constantly innovate, innovate according to the characteristics of the country to establish and create, uh, create a new model that is uh, suitable for itself. This is the future trend of the County Commercial Media Center in Zhejiang Province. Okay, uh, the last part is limitations. Uh, since the study of the County Commercial Media Center in this paper is based on the summary of the existing articles on the County Commercial Media Center collected by CNKI without too much date, data, uh, the accuracy needs further research to support it. Okay, here's the, here are the reference. That's all, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Zhu Hoiin. Yeah. Uh, you have to stay inside this room because might be there are some question and answer that you have to answer if the audience asks you some question and after uh, our last presenter. It's okay. 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 All right, thank you very much. Then we go for other presenter. Uh, Dr. Norhuda Saleh. Dr. Norhuda? Saya, Dr. Ya, ah, saya. Okay. <laughs> Apa dia, Dr. Okay. Norhuda? Okay, terima kasih, Dr. Assalamualaikum, selamat petang. Okay, um, due to uh, poor internet connection, saya minta maaf, Dr. Um, saya tak boleh nak on apa tu, saya punya kamera sebab saya diberi ruang untuk present hari ini supposed to be hari Kamis ok insyaAllah oh. I try my best doktor <laughs> ok um, where is next step ok ok Okay. Um, tajuk pembentangan saya adalah uh, analisis konsep proksimik dalam adat perkahwinan etnik Tidong uh, Pulau Sebatik Tawau Sabah. Ini adalah uh, sebahagian daripada hasil dapatan di bawah uh, grant uh, FRGS uh, KPT insyaAllah yang akan selesai pada Mac 2021. Okay. Dan ini adalah um, sedikit garis panduan lah. Okay. Um, okay, um, untuk kajian ini sebab kajian ini besar kita nak melihat sebenarnya susu galo uh, etnik tidung, okay, etnik tidung di di di, di Sabah. Jadi uh, untuk petang ini saya hanya mengkhusus kepada uh, kajian terhadap proksimik bagaimana penggunaan ruang khususnya dalam adat perkahwinan etnik tidung di Pulau Sebatik satu kajian kes. Uh, kawasan sempadan Malaysia Indonesia. Okey. Saya ambil definisi proksimik daripada Hall 1968 iaitu hal menyatakan bahawa yang dimasukkan proksimik uh, manusia menentukan jarak antara individu atau pihak semasa uh, terlibat dalam proses komunikasi ataupun uh, interaksi. Okey. Dan penggunaan ruang secara fizikal yang menghadkan jarak antara individu atau pihak Okay. Um, dan kemudiannya saya mengambil sebab uh, Hans 
Tan Hans 2015 telah memberikan definasi dan pecahan uh, ruang. Okey, ada uh, empat di sini dan um, ruang dimasukkan di sini adalah dari sudut jarak antara uh, individu dengan individu ketika proses komunikasi berlaku. Okey. Kita ada empat ruang iaitu ruang intim, pribadi, sosial dan kemudiannya paling luas sekali adalah ruang awam. Okey, sebelum itu sedikit uh, pengenalan sebenarnya siapa etnik tidung ni. Okey, um, kajian uh, etnik tidung di Indonesia khususnya di Kalimantan. Okey, um, banyak dilaksanakan oleh pengkaji uh, di, 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 di di Indonesia. Tapi dalam konteks uh, Malaysia khususnya di Sabah, uh, kajian terawal ditemukan oleh uh, seorang pengkaji Jepun. Masya Allah saya lupa nama dia. Okey, uh, ada dua kajian dan pada 2003, okey, beliau telah menghasilkan penerbitan. Um, melihat um, taburan penduduk etnik tidung di Sabah yang kajiannya mendapati bahawa etnik tidung ini mendiami pesisir sungai sepanjang Kinabatangan, Tawau dan di sebelah um, bersempadan dengan Indonesia. Jadi Sebenarnya agak sukar. Kenapa etnik tidung ini dipilih? Kerana etnik tidung ini merupakan etnik dalam kelompok kadazan dusun murut rumus. Dia di bawah undang-undang adat negeri Sabah. Okay? Dan dia adalah etnik asal Sabah yang um, kajian terhadap etnik tidung di Sabah ni memang sangat-sangat um, kurang. Jadi kita nak melihat uh, susu galur etnik tidung okay. bila uh, pembacaan dari sudut pembacaan dan uh, data kajian di lapangan kita menemukan bahawa etnik tidung ni etnik tidung dia duduk di bawah keluarga besar Dayak okay. dan di dalam uh, murut Murut ada 12 sub etnik okay. dan tidung adalah salah satu sub etnik murut okay. dan mereka ini uh, mahu dikenali uh, dengan nama-nama yang kita pecahkan lah. ini daripada dapatan daripada uh, kajian lapangan um, dia sebenarnya uh, pecahan uh, sub etnik tidung ini merujuk dari mana asal mereka Okay. Sembakong, nunukan, sumbul, tarakan, bulungan adalah nama-nama uh, daerah daripada mana uh, asal etnik ini. Okay. Okay. So objektif kajian saya adalah uh, kami ini untuk melihat, mengkaji penggunaan jarak dan ruang dan kemudiannya kita nak menganalisis makna komunikasi bukan lisan yang wujud dalam konsep proksimik. Okay. Uh, kualitatif kajian kes okay. uh, dan kita lakukan temu bual mendalam dengan informan yang kita telah kenal pasti. Okay. Informan utama kami adalah ketua anak negeri. Ketua anak negeri ini adalah lantikan daripada uh, pentadbiran kerajaan negeri. Um, dia yang, yang bertanggungjawab untuk menjaga segala hal ehwal um, etnik yang terdapat uh, di Sabah khususnya dalam konteks ini ketua anak negeri kita pergi kepada Tawaulah sebab ibu pejabatnya di sana okey kami menemui ketua anak negeri untuk mendapatkan maklumat uh, awal dan kemudiannya dengan Jabatan Kebudayaan Sabah daripada sana kita menemukan beberapa informan yang boleh membantu untuk uh, kajian ini dilaksanakan dan um, sudah tentunya kajian awal banyak melalui kajian literatur, kajian perpustakaan uh, menerusi bahan-bahan yang ditulis oleh pengkaji um, Indonesia dan uh, data juga kita buat transkripsi data untuk memastikan uh, maklumat yang kami dapat tu kami proses uh, seboleh mungkin seboleh sebab saya kata seboleh mungkin sebab um, 
bila kajian itu dilakukan secara bersemuka walaupun kita buat rakaman ada perkara-perkara yang kadang-kadang kita kurang jelas jadi kita perlu uh, pergi balik dan bertanya kepada informan sama ada makna yang uh, kita terjemahkan adalah sama dengan apa yang dimaksudkan okey okey ini adalah kumpulan uh, penyelidik yang turut serta di pulau sebatik Okay. Dan uh, ini adalah uh, boleh kami panggil uh, key informal lah um, uh, ayah ujang sebab uh, ni uh, untuk untuk makluman rakan-rakan uh, sebenarnya untuk mendekati etnik tidung bukan perkara yang mudah. Kami mengambil masa 3 hingga 4 bulan untuk uh, mereka mempercayai bahawa kehadiran kami uh, bukan untuk uh, bukan untuk uh, membuat apa ataupun mengubah uh, kebudayaan ataupun uh, adat yang mereka ada tapi lebih kepada uh, dokumentasi okey ambil masa yang 3 4 bulan untuk dia percaya dan kami perlu uh, membuat satu surat aku janji bahawa uh, data yang dianalisis perlu dibentangkan sebelum dikemukakan pada kementerian kemungkinan kemungkinan sebab uh, belum pergi ekoran eh, daripada pandemik uh, kemungkinan besar um, ada data-data yang kalau tidak diizinkan untuk kita bentangkan kepada kementerian dan benda itu hanya menjadi uh, milik peribadi kami itu adalah perjanjian awal sebab etnik tidung ni dia sangat-sangat menjaga um, apa tu dia punya adat dan maklumat Okey, uh, ini semasa kajian um, adat uh, perkahwinan. Okey, semasa kami pergi itu berlangsungnya satu adat perkahwinan sehari sebelum itu uh, kami dijemput untuk melihat uh, persiapan uh, dan selepas itulah barulah berlakunya uh, apa tu uh, adat perkahwinan. Okey, dapatan kajian dari sudut uh, tingkat adat. Uh, dalam adat perkahwinan ni dinyatakan bahawa ada 11 adat yang masih lagi diamalkan okey daripada pembacaan uh, kajian perpustakaan dia ada 15 tapi bila kita pergi ke lapangan dan melihat sendiri bagaimana uh, etnik tidung melaksanakan adat perkahwinan daripada 15 tu dia pergi hanya 11 okey dan uh, di sini minta maaflah uh, agak kecil sedikit okey um, saya, kami gunakan perkataan-perkataan tidung dan dalam kurungan itu kita letakkan perkataan dalam bahasa Melayu. Kalau kita lihat dekat situ, uh, proximate, kategori jarak dan ruang, sebelas tingkat itu, okay, uh, merisik dia hanya berlaku, merisik sebenarnya dia hanya ber, ataupun dipanggil nyosot hanya berlaku di ruang tangga dia dia um, merisik maknanya wakil pengantin lelaki datang ke rumah wakil pengantin perempuan dan adanya uh, proses komunikasi di sana dia tidak merisik kepada keluarga tapi melihat tingkah laku anak gadis okey dan kemudiannya ada proses bertunang sama juga cuma uh, di sana dinyatakan ruang peribadi berlakunya uh, dan ruang sosial di ruang ruang tamu dan menghantar belanja uh, ruang sosial dan uniknya mereka ada mandi uh, bedak ini uh, dipertuntunkan kepada kaum keluarga walaupun dibuat dalam ruang sosial hanya uh, keluarga yang terdekat sahaja dibenar untuk menghadiri dan mereka juga ada adat berinai, nikah, uh, mandi pengantin dan kemudiannya mandi pengantin ni um, berpupul lain lagi tu okay. dan dia ada adat selak-selak okay, adat selak-selak kalau kita dulu macam Uh, sebelum pengantin lelaki pergi uh, ke pelamin untuk bersanding dengan pengantin perempuan di situ uh, ruang dia ditandakan uh, dan uh, jarak juga dan dia ada adat bersanding yang dipanggil berbantang ataupun berduluk okey ini adalah puncak um, adat perkahwinan dalam masyarakat Tidung juga dalam masyarakat Melayu juga dalam masyarakat Riau sebagaimana Tenas FND mengatakan bahawa adat bersanding merupakan kemuncak adat perkahwinan untuk uh, sebagai pemakluman dan kemudian selepas itu ada mandi tiga hari sebelum pengantin perempuan dibawa untuk menziarah pengantin keluarga pengantin lelaki okey ini dapatan dia yang lebih uh, jelas okey kita ada sebelas dan di sana kita nyatakan uh, ruang. Saya ambil tiga minit lagi. Okay. 
Okey, uh, implikasi kajian. Okey, kajian ini mendapati uh, memang uh, konsep Hans and Hans for proximity dan ruang boleh diguna pakai uh, tetapi uh, perlu dibuat pemurnian berdasarkan konteks budaya kepercayaan uh, etnik hidung ataupun sebab dekat sini kita menjurus kepada uh, kajian kes okay. ada empat itu uh, ruang intim berlaku bila mana mandi tiga hari dengan lelaki dan dengan perempuan mandi dalam bilik air untuk uh, mengelakkan dikenakan sihir Okay. Dan ruang peribadi diberikan di sini adalah untuk keluarga kecil okay. Dan ruang awam untuk keluarga kecil Ruang awam, ruang sosial untuk keluarga kecil maknanya uh, macam yang berinai itu okay, Dia dibuka, dibuat di ruang sosial uh, Tetapi hanya dihadkan, hanya dihadkan kepada ahli keluarga sahaja okay. Cuma untuk adat bersanding ataupun berduduk ataupun berbantang di uh, buat di ruang di ruang yang sama ruang sosial tapi dinyatakan sini dalam keluarga yang besar maksudnya ada jemputan uh, kepada uh, masyarakat uh, setempat okay, itu yang yang kita uh, temukan jadi ini adalah uh, maksud uh, bagaimana masyarakat itu menentukan penggunaan ruang dalam melaksanakan uh, adat uh, perkahwinan mereka. Okay. Dan uh, kami ingin mengambil kesempatan sebab penyelidikan ini dibayari oleh uh, Kementerian Pengajian Tinggi. Okay. Uh, sebahagiannya adalah, yang selebihnya adalah kajian tentang uh, analisis makna makanan. Okey, saya kira itu sahaja doktor untuk pembentangan saya. Ada lagi satu minit betul ke doktor? Okey, insyaAllah. Okey, Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih doktor. Okey, sama. Okey, uh, thank you very much to Dr. Nurul Huda Saleh. Uh, this is uh, might be our final presenter, uh, Dr. Rizki Ramadhani. Dr. Rizki? As I have been informed that this will be presented, his presentation by uh, through the video recording, isn't it? Uh, Mr. Imran? Imran? Okay. Ah, yes, doctor. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, just enjoy our presentation from uh, Dr. Rizki, isn't it? Through the through his video or her, is it? Rizki Ramadhani Nasution. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Shall we start now? From communication right. science. Uh, of University of Sumatra Utara. So today I would like to present my research paper entitled The Complexity of Communication and Mediation Practices in Indonesia Student Movement, Gejan Mangil. Okay, I would like to share my screen and this is the slide. I will make it full mode. All right, um, maybe if some of you are in Indonesia, you might be familiar with Gejayan Memanggil or Gejayan Calling. Uh, yep, Gejayan Memanggil is an Indonesia student movement based on Yogyakarta city. So Yogyakarta is one of the largest uh, city in Indonesia. Gejayan Calling is a civil disobedience campaign launched in September 23, 2019 um, by Aliansi Rakyat Bergerak or People Movement Alliance. Uh, that's the name of the activist group. So um, there are several protests in many cities in Indonesia. Um, maybe it's about uh, 20 cities in Indonesia having that uh, demonstration campaign at the time. It was between September to October 2019. People all over Indonesia criticizing national parliament who was about to end their tenure of 2014 to 2019. 
So the series of demonstration before and after Bijan memanggil in many other city Indonesia areas. There are Yogyakarta, Semarang, Jakarta, Banda Aceh. And um, five students died at the time and more than 240 people were arrested. Before they stepped down, they were in a rush to enact. Uh, so we go back to the previous explanation. Yeah. Uh, before they stepped down the parliament, they stepped down, uh, They were in a rush to enact a series of bills, uh, all of which are very conservative, including weakening the role of the most respected institution in Indonesia called Komisi Pemberantasan Korupsi or Corruption Commission of Eradication and many other bills like bills on criminal code, uh, bills on mineral and resource, and etc. All of the bills and regulations seems to be very conservative and enacting it had minimum of public participation. Oh yeah, uh, at the time at least four, uh, 5, uh, 000 to 10,000 protesters had joined in the movement. So the the movement successfully circulated the demands to the public through social media and through the direct action also and making Gejen Memanggil or Gejen Calling Movement the largest student movement in Yogyakarta after Reformation era. So uh, one day before protest, Gejen Calling or hashtag Gejen Memanggil became trending topic on Twitter. <clears throat> Um, the dissemination of hashtag the giant calling on Twitter and Instagram is part of mobilization strategy by People Movement Alliance. So as you can see uh, on the screen, yeah, that's the Gejayan calling in Jogja with national coverage. Yeah, hashtag the giant calling is became a trending Twitter at the time. Um, with all previous statements, uh, lead us to a question. Is social media the only one that contributes to the success of dissemination of the protest movement? Uh, so instead of explaining uh, the importance uh, role and the significance role of social media on social movement, I want to pay attention to various types of media, such as traditional media, alternative media, and more importantly, personal communication and interaction among the activists within the movement. Yeah, uh, therefore, uh, I use self-mediation practices by Kemets. I want to explain the complexity of communication and mediation practices in the Indonesia student movement. The self-mediation practices comprises uh, the notion of disclosure, examinations, and remembrance. So this is the data and methodology. The study, the study uses qualitative approach with digital ethnographic method. The object of this research is the action of Gujayan calling part one and two, because there are several of them uh, till now, till 2020, 21, sorry. Uh, Gejayan Calling Part 1 and 2 was held on September 2019, 23 and 30 September. Data collection techniques are participant observation, in-depth interviews, and uh, desk research. The participatory observation was carried out by observing and participating as a followers on the official Twitter and Instagram accounts and joining as a member WhatsApp group, uh, namely Road to Gejayan. So I also conducted an uh, in-depth interview with uh, eight uh, Alliance Zero Kettbergerak activists, People Movement Alliance activists, who played a key role in the Gujayan calling protests, part one and two. The People's Movement Alliance consists of the Agitation and Propaganda Division, the Events and Action Division, the Public Relation and Visual Division, and the Division of Research. The desk research was carried out by collecting Aliansi Rakyat Bergerak or People Movement Alliance output products starting from the results studies, poster, pictures, photos, uploaded through the Instagram, Twitter accounts at Gijin Mamanggil and the links, uh, the Google Drive links, bit.ly.bit.ly slash Rakyat Bergerak link. 
So uh, here there are uh, the results and fundings. Social movement and their activist members tends to all to use all the media and communication technologies available and to combine their technological affordance and to fit their various activist strategies. We can um, use this matrix of self mediation affordance so in the screen we can see that uh, we can see the matrix of self mediation affordance of BJ movement. Yeah. Uh, the concept of affordance became uh, popular in technology and innovation studies to make sense of our relationship with uh, and our shaping of technologies, especially media and communication technologies. Uh, the table is just just the boxes to sets of mediation affordance to provide a matrix of self mediation affordance and corresponding media and communication technologies uh the public and or outward is the the affordance to communicate in real time or asynchronously and the second one is the affordance to communicate privately or publicly regarding the first tension uh the real time versus asynchronous communication activists will assess the intention the intentionality of their communication strategy when choosing with which media uh, which which media to communicate for example organizing uh, or coordinating direct action will require different communication practices and technology compared to activists wanting to disseminate their movement frames through different channel or to coordinate internally this brings us to the second tension between private and public forms of communication. Some communication technologies, such as like uh, letters, telephone, or email, allow for more private forms of uh, communication, while others, such as radio, Twitter, website, Instagram, enable public communication. We should also take into the into account the potential reach of communication technologies some communication tools enables activists enable activists to reach mass audience uh, like broadcasting so as you can see uh, in real time we have media social and in permanency we have video photo and digital streaming uh the gadget movement used instagram twitter and blog suara rakyat bergerak and um, media cetak is uh, print media they use poster banners and flyers to disseminate their um frames and their collective identity in the real time they in, in a private uh in a private affordance they also have mobile phone and in permanency, they use uh, email to communicate internally. Uh, and also they have instant messenger like WhatsApp and Signal app to communicate uh, internally and to coordinate internally also. So the next slide is research findings and highlights. Uh, to answer a research question, we can use the focus notion of technologies of the self. Uh, the technologies of the self uh, comprises three different notions. The first one is disclosure. The second one is examination and remembrance. By applying the notion of technologies of the self, not to individual, but to collective actors. I take this experiment further by doing this. I argue that there is a need for more complex understanding of what Honet said recently called that in I in we or the way which we all negotiate and navigate the rela relationship between our own complex individual identities and a panoply of collective identities. Self-mediation practices are constitutive of the construction of collective identities and have become highly relevant in a view of disseminating, communicating, 
recording and archiving a, a, a variety of movement discourses and dates. So the technologies of the self, as a theor uh, theorized by Foucault, relate how, uh, relate to how individuals internalize rules and constraints. Uh, Foucault uh, identified three stock of technologies of the self, disclosure, examination, and remembrance. In this research, uh, disclosure in this uh, Gaja and Calling movement, they use print, um, uh, print media such as flyer, posters, and banner, as well as the internet to communicate their movement discourse and frames and to mobilize and to mobilize protester for their direct action. Uh, the notion of examination in the notion of examination. Gujan colleague movement use bottom up mechanism for coordinating direct action, or uh, we can see that the Gujan colleague movement uh, implicate uh, direct action called polycentric movement. Uh, they they also use WhatsApp and Signal uh, app are both. Uh, the essential platform to communicate internally, to coordinate internally. They also use popular culture content on social media to attract more people. The last one is remembrance. <laughs> reference for, uh, for further research, uh, such as examining how the movement frames disseminated by activists through online platforms are received or not by non-activist audiences and users, especially in context of Asian countries. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity i have ex uh, i have presented my research paper if you have any question or further discussion we can discuss it now or, immediately. <laughs> or if we don't have After much time we, uh, you can ask me through my email okay thank you very much uh I think we have finished all the presentation because our next our two presenter, uh, Badru Ridwan and Dwika Muzaki, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, might be mm -hmm. they have pulled out okay. from the conference. Mis might okay. be mistaken, but no. Yeah, yeah, Mister. Um, Mister Badru said that he want to present, but he needs a little bit of time. Because he's trying to figure okay. out uh, something with his laptop. Okay, all right. Uh, now we proceed with a uh, question and answer for, for our last uh, four, uh, the, the four presenters that we have, uh, that they have presented the, the presentation just now. Is it any question for them? Each of them? Or some ideas or comment, you can also give some idea or comment. Is there any question? For each of them, uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Zion Hoa Yin, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Jamaluddin, Dr. Nur Huda, and uh, Dr. Rizki Ramadani Nasution. Open for the floor. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Uh, then we just wait for uh, Mr. Badro to present his presentation. Mr. Imran. Um, yes, Doctor. Mr. Um, is it I'm trying to reach Mr. Badro. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no response yet. Okay. But he's, he's uh, just sent me his slides and he can okay. get some problems with his laptop. Then is it we we want to proceed with his slide or what? Uh, but, he asked me just now to give this a little bit okay. um, All right. time to prepare. Yeah. Okay, Flo. Oh. Many apologize from us because of the technical difficulty. Uh, just be patient and wait. <laughs> just wait. Dr. So Shahizan, can I yeah. ask a question? Because I don't okay. want to kill the moment just like that. Okay. Right. Um, I think um, I, I would like to ask Dr. Okay. Nahuda. Uh, Dr. Nahuda, uh, I think your presentation was, uh, was good and I love that presentation. Uh, but I've been wondering because our conference team is something to do with the new norm. So I would like to ask because you have such an understanding of that uh, rituals, you know, tribal rituals. How do you see uh, them practicing uh, the rituals? Because the rituals are very um, kind of organized and uh, it's a long held belief. But my question is, uh, how do you see the new norm affecting uh, the cultural practice? Dr. Nauda, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih Dr. Jamuldin. Oh, okay. Um, untuk makluman, kajian ni 2019 doktor. Sebenarnya, saya rasa saya ni macam just, uh, I just threw uh, the ball. Sebab sebenarnya, bila saya tengok conference ni, saya sebenarnya uh, miss that new norms. Okay, whatever it is. Okay. Um, Sebab new norms ni jugalah ada a few things yang uh, masyarakat dekat sana really uh, apa tu ambil berat. Contohnya uh, semasa pandemik dia ada ritual tapi kami tidak dibenarkan masuk. Sebelum uh, masa tu kerajaan belum lagi um, arahkan untuk yang PKP ni belum lagi. Tapi tapi di mana mereka ni in term of sebab majority dekat sana dia adalah keluarga. Dan walau seben, walaupun sebenarnya kami dianggap keluarga, sebenarnya memang dah dianggap keluarga sebab uh, saya ada ayah angkat di sana. Tapi uh, bila new norms, uh, dia rasa keselamatan kita amat penting. Jadi dia kata tak nak ambil risiko, whatever reason, walaupun dia kata you ada grant, KPT bagi you grant, you need to follow the apa doktor, kita kata jadual kan? Sebab kita ada gancat everything, tapi um, dia tak, tak, tak izinkan. Jadi uh, mereka ni sebenarnya saya rasa lagi sangat uh, ambil berat soal kesempatan selamatan ahli keluarga mereka di kampung berbanding yang saya bukan, bukan nak cakap apa doktor uh, saya rasa kita yang duduk di bandar ni kadang-kadang kita mungkin terlupa ataupun careless sebab kita rasa oh uh, antibody kita dah cukup kita dah ambil uh, a lot of vitamin supplement jadi kita rasa kita boleh lawan covid tapi mereka tidak mereka sangat mempercayai bahawa whatever reason you tak boleh masuk dalam uh, kawasan ini sehingga di, dia sendiri yang istiharkan selamat walaupun kerajaan walaupun kerajaan benarkan kita masuk tapi bila dia rasakan benda tu akan menggugat keselamatan dia tak bagi itu yang itu yang saya nampak untuk new norm sebenarnya doktor bagaimana mereka sangat menjaga okey terima kasih doktor uh, sama uh, can i ask Rizky uh, Dr Syaizan can i ask uh, uh, Rizky Ramadhani is that is it okay if I ask you a question? Because I think your presentation was so enlightening because I was following that movement as well. But but I think I was wondering because you employ Foucault uh, theorization and Foucault uh, uh, is known for uh, being, uh, what do you call that, a philosopher, a French philosopher that talks about 
uh, power and also ideology. So I was thinking in what way that kind of movement in, in Indonesia strikes a, a what do you call it, imbalance in terms of the power structure uh, that certainly takes this kind of movement. And, and what, what, what kind of movement do you think you can predict from uh, the disruption of this power structure? Thank you. Is she here or is she a boy? <laughs> She's here, but she didn't respond. I'm not sure. Might be because of some technical. Uh, Dr. Syedan, tadi at the yeah. end of the presentation, dia, I tak berapa dengar. Is it my own ke memang dia tak ada problem dengan uh, recording dia tadi? At the end, at the end of the video actually. Uh -huh. Some sort like two or three minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not just yeah. my mic yeah. lah, my line. No, okay. No, it's okay. Thank you. Terizki? Okay, it might be internet problem or technical problem uh, Mr. Imran Mr. Imran yeah yes uh, sorry is it any is it any response from Mr. Badrul yeah uh, Mr. Badrul just called me just now and he said that he already entered this room Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's getting ready to present. Okay. Is it is in. Um, let me check first. No, I don't see his name. Yeah, I don't think he's in. Mm, is he in the right room? That's also. <laughs> I told me he, that. He's he's in <laughs> He's not here, but he told me that yeah, he has entered here. the room. I think he entered. Can, can we open for comments, Dr. Chaizan? Can yeah, we open for okay. comments from participants yes, yes, while yes. waiting? Yes, it's okay. Can I uh, ask a question for Zhonghua while waiting? Zhonghua? Zhonghua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, Zhonghua. Hi, Doctor. Congratulations Doctor. for your nice, really, really good presentation. Uh, but I've, I've been wondering, because you were doing systematic review, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I've been wondering, in how do you foresee your research, PhD research, in the context of uh, pandemic now, and you are in China, we are here. How do you foresee that affecting your research? Your supervisor is also here, you can complain to him. <laughs> but she, she's in Norway, I think. Yeah, that's what I mean, you know, you are because we, are, we, are, we are trying to relate to the pandemic situation. You are doing the research, you are presenting the research. How do you foresee, uh, you know, collecting data in your country, and whatnot. Or would there be any new thing that you need to reconsider? Okay, okay, doctor. Uh, actually, now I am in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, no wonder my class always late because of you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and uh, I will come back to. Uh, I will come to come back to China maybe, uh, next year, and I will do the field work, uh, uh in Zhejiang province. Yeah, I will go to the County Convergent Media Center in Zhejiang province to, 
to gather first-hand uh, research data. Yeah. So do you see any, any problem because of the COVID, the traveling limitation uh, and, and um, cases that, that are in the increase again? Any, any issue with your PhD, do you think? Uh, for the problem? <clears throat> Mm, yeah, I have a big problem with how to <laughs> go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and now I I have contact uh, with some uh, senior leader mm. in the uh, Cambodian Media Center in Zhejiang Province now, and uh, yeah, and they uh, agreed to uh, accept my interview uh, in next year. Yeah, I think mm, there's no not that much problem <laughs> with the research. Your writing has improved after my class, huh? Well done. <laughs> okay, thank you very much uh, for all presenters and audience because uh, we have some some problem with the, the Mr. Badrol might be his internet have some problem, then we just stop our, we just end up our presentation here, our, our session here. And thank you very much to all of you. And I give it back to our MC, Mr. Imran. Thank you very much. Imran? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shah. So with that, we end our prior session this evening. Before we end the session, thank you to the chairperson Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Nur Shahizan Ali, all presenters and participants for this enlightening and fruitful discussion. Please show your appreciation by clicking on the reaction button below. So hope to see you again in the next mention conference. Thank you. You may leave okay. the room. All right. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. 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 Yeah.